Loyalty programs. How do they work? Which ones are the best? How do you redeem points? And what is the point in the first place? Most importantly, which ones should you use to get to where you want to go? How do you turn this into this? Flights and travel, whether that's in economy class, business class, or first class. Many people ask these questions, but few have the answers. That's why we're here today. We're going to talk about the best points programs in Canada so that you know exactly which ones you should be focusing on and which ones aren't worth your time. Now, before we jump into the details of all the major points programs out there, it's time for a crash course. All the programs generally fall into one of three categories. Category number one is what's known as fixed value points. These are the points programs that like to keep things simple. There's usually a fixed value attached to every point, typically something like one point equals one cent or 100 points equals one dollar. In fact, the simplicity is the selling point of these programs because you don't really need to study the program very much to understand how it works. Let's take one example, WestJet Rewards, the loyalty program of Canada's second largest airline. Their currency is known as WestJet dollars and how it works is literally however many WestJet dollars you have, you get to use these dollars towards the cost of a WestJet flight. So if you have 33 WestJet dollars like I do, you can redeem that towards $33 off any WestJet flight. Simple, right? That's the good thing about these programs. It keeps things simple and you know exactly how much value you're getting from every point that you earn. Now the downside of these programs is also the fact that it keeps things simple and that the value is fixed. You can't really use these types of points for the really cool, awesome travel experiences out there like business class flights or super luxurious hotel stays because these things usually cost a lot of money when you pay with cash so they would also require an unrealistically high number of points if you were to use these fixed value points. So the bottom line for fixed value points, they're easy to use, but the value you get from them is limited. So whether or not they're worth your time is questionable. Now on the opposite side of the spectrum is flexible travel rewards, like Aeroplan, Canada's most popular frequent flyer program. Another example would be British Airways Avios, or really any major frequent flyer program out there. These points don't have a fixed value, and instead you redeem these points according to certain rules and charts. Now these rules and charts can become quite complex, and it can often take effort, sometimes a considerable amount of effort, to figure out exactly how they work and how to maximize the value of your points while working within them. Every program has its own sweet spots, a term that refers to a way of redeeming your points that provides much higher value than the alternative ways. And putting in the time and effort to understand these sweet spots is the key to maximizing these flexible travel rewards. But, and this is a very important but, once you do put in the time and effort to understand these sweet spots, you can pull off some truly spectacular trips around the world while paying very little money out of pocket. Think along the lines of a round the world trip to all six continents for only 160,000 aeroplan miles in business class all the way, or a series of first class flights on some of the world's most luxurious airlines for just 140,000 Alaska miles, or five nights in some of the world's most luxurious hotels for 240,000 Marriott Bonvoy points. Those are just a few examples, but they give you an idea of what's possible out there by taking advantage of these frequent flyer programs and hotel loyalty programs. As long as you're continuing to earn the points, you can continue traveling in this fashion by understanding the sweet spots of each program and maximizing the value of your points. So to summarize, flexible travel rewards provide much higher value for your points, but they do have a bit of a learning curve associated with them. It's basically a trade-off between fixed value travel programs and flexible value travel programs in terms of how much effort you want to put in, low effort, low rewards, and how much value you get out of it. High effort, high rewards. But it's not just these two. The last category is sort of the holy grail when it comes to points programs.
transferable points. These currencies take on characteristics of both fixed travel rewards and flexible travel rewards because they can be used on their own or transferred to other frequent flyer programs or hotel loyalty programs. The eminent example here in Canada is American Express's membership rewards points. You can redeem your membership rewards points at one cent per point, so if you had a $300 flight and you paid for it with your American Express credit card, you could redeem 30,000 points and wipe that charge off your bill. Alternatively, you could transfer those 30,000 points to a variety of frequent flyer programs like Aeroplan or British Airways Avios, and that flexibility and versatility is what makes American Express membership reward points so valuable. If you like fixed points currencies, you can use them like a fixed points currency. If you like flexible rewards like Aeroplan or Marriott Bonvoy, you can transfer those points to those programs for that purpose. By and large, I'd say American Express is the most powerful points currency here in Canada by a pretty significant margin, and I'd say that's where most travelers should be focusing their energies when it comes to collecting points. Now, besides American Express, what other programs do I recommend? Well, in my view, as someone who likes to use points to unlock the finer things in life, traveling in luxury, caviar and champagne at 37,000 feet, and as somebody who doesn't like to pay a lot of money for these things, the best points programs are the ones that allow you to accomplish exactly those goals. The three main programs I use to accomplish those goals are Aeroplan, Alaska Airlines, and British Airways Avios. And let's talk about each of those programs in more detail. First off, Aeroplan. Aeroplan. If you live in Canada, you know that people love to hate on Aeroplan. Every week, there's an article on somebody who's trying to redeem their Aeroplan miles and they just don't get it. They're either trying to redeem their miles but they're getting hit with huge surcharges on their flights or they simply can't find any flights or they've somehow let all the miles they've been collecting for 10 years expire. <sighs> Awkward. Now, honestly, all of that makes me a little bit sad to read. And that's because if you understand how Aeroplan works, it's by far the best points program here in Canada, especially if you want to travel internationally or fly in business class. Let's start with the basics. The Aeroplan reward chart is on aeroplan.com and it's pretty easy to understand. You get charged a certain number of miles based on which geographic zone you're flying to. The best thing though, by far the best thing about Aeroplan is the fact that they allow you to have up to two stopovers on a round trip flight. A stopover means getting to stop in a city for a prolonged duration on your way to your final destination. So what this means is say you wanted to redeem for a flight from Toronto to Hong Kong. You could go from Toronto to Europe, spend two weeks there, fly from Europe to Hong Kong, spend another week there, and then go from Hong Kong to Tokyo, spend another week or two weeks there, and then come back to Toronto. And you could fly the whole way in economy class, business class, or first class, depending on how many miles you have. Trips like these are known as mini round the world trips, and they're a great way to get fantastic value for your Aeroplan miles. And it doesn't have to be those cities as well. It can be any three places around the world stitched together in one big trip. In fact, I recently came back from a trip hitting up Ghana, Turkey, Australia, China, and the Federated States of Micronesia all in one big trip for 160,000 miles in business class. Now, as I've mentioned before, Booking these trips takes a certain amount of learning and expertise. You need to know which airlines to fly with in order to avoid those huge surcharges. You need to know how to find those flights if the search engine isn't giving you any results. And you need to know how to make sure your miles don't expire. It's not hard. Just make sure you have some kind of earning or redeeming activity within 12 months. But if you're passionate about travel, the sheer possibility of taking a trip like that should be motivation enough for you to navigate the learning curve. There's so many resources out there to help you along as well. So as always, I've put some links in the description below. Head over to my website to absorb some of that knowledge. Okay, enough about Aeroplan. Let's talk about the Alaska program. Alaska is really good for Canadians who want to travel to Asia, especially if they want to treat themselves to a premium cabin experience that's going to be extremely memorable. That's because some of the most luxurious flight experiences you can ever hope to have are available through Alaska's partner airlines. Both Japan Airlines First Class and Cathay Pacific First Class 
can be booked for as little as 70,000 Alaska miles. And with Canadian credit card that offers 30,000 miles all on its own, you can see how those flight experiences can be well within reach. If you live in Western Canada, Alaska miles are also super useful for a quick weekend trip down to Seattle, starting at only 5,000 miles one way. And the last program I wanted to talk about is British Airways Avios. It's a very unique program. If you look at the award chart, it doesn't break the world up into geographic zones like most other charts. Instead, it charges you a certain number of miles, or avios as it's called, based on the distance you're flying. So as a result, booking long haul flights with avios is often stupidly expensive, especially if you're flying in business class or first class where the mileage cost adds up really quickly. But on the other hand, where the value lies is booking short haul flights with avios because short haul flights can often be super expensive if you're buying them with cash as well. For example, if you're flying to South America, the flights between different countries can often be $300, $400 one way. But on the other hand, if you use your avios to book on their partner airline, LATAM, the Chilean airline, you can often use as little as 4,500 avios to hop between countries, and that's a spectacular value. So in general, if you live in Canada and you're interested in traveling internationally, focus on Aeroplan for those big long haul international flights, especially if you want to treat yourself to business class or first class. Also, if you want to travel to Asia, then you should be looking at the Alaska Airlines program, and you can use British Airways Avios for those short side trips when you do get to your destination. Now, this is of course just the basics. Truthfully, I could make this video probably over an hour and a half long, but then we'd have some of you enjoying the content and some of you just having your eyes glaze over when I start to talk about mixed cabins, minimum connection times, and maximum permitted mileages, and all that jibber jabber. Yeah, that's enough for now. We'll leave it there. We've talked about the basics of the best points programs here in Canada if you want to travel internationally in luxury at a fraction of the price. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something from it, be sure to subscribe to the Prince of Travel YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below the video. I will turn it over to you. Which programs are you collecting points in at the moment? Have you found value in earning and redeeming those points? And are you going to go create an Aeroplan account if you don't have one already? Let me hear it in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.